Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. My name is Aaron, and with me again here today is Jamie. Hey, folks. Today we've got the Bad Batch Season 2 version of the Wrecker Helmet. This is our third Season 2 Bad Batch Helmet, right? Yeah, that would be right. We've I mean, got if Hunter... You, if you uh, also count Imperial Cody as well. That's true, I guess. He hasn't changed, luckily. First we did the Season 2 Hunter, now then the Season 2 Tech, and finally... Season 2 Wrecker, how do you feel like it compared to the other ones? This one was more interesting than I thought it would be. Now, at first glance, you don't think that there's been many changes between Season 1 and Season 2, mostly the 9-9 uh, that is on the forehead. Mm -hmm. But the further you look, the more details you pick up that have changed between the seasons, especially in one of my favorite elements, the weathering. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that more in the future. But starting out for this project, we're using one of our casted helmets. That's what you're starting with. What are you going to do to it first? Well, I always like to make sure that I'm going to get as accurate as possible on cutting out the eyes and the neck ring. So I always use a nice Sharpie that is very clear to guide my hand as I start to cut away that excess material. Uh, the method of cutting is first with a drill on a Dremel. And then once I'm sure that I have an accurate guide, I start to use a cutting wheel. And it's just a carbon fiber cutting wheel that will make quick work of all that excess material. You're kind of just connecting those holes that you pre-drilled around the eyes. That's exactly right. So then we've got to clean up that area around the eyes, right? Because now it's just a bunch of dots connected and uh, needs a bit of cleanup. Yeah, so I like to use a Dremel with a sanding drum that will just hog off the material really roughly and it will get it down generally to the point that we want it to be. Once that's done, I start to get finer and finer, first using some engineering rasps. Yeah, this is some big, uh, big files. Yeah, very big. Usually used for metal, but it makes quick work of some resin. Mm -hmm. So once we're pretty close to where we want to be, that's when I get finer and finer. Usually I use some sandpaper at this point, and then we want to just clean up what we have, and then I just apply a layer of Bondo. That just makes sure that any of those file lines or you'll see around the back of the neck where the casting seam was, that will just get a single layer of Bondo that can then just be quickly sanded off. And once that sanding is done, you should be left with a perfectly clean cast. This process, despite being a little bit different from a 3D print, it goes by much quicker. It involves a lot less sanding. Once you get the eye holes and uh, neck ring trimmed out, you can basically jump right into painting. Yeah, you're at the fun part already. So like all of my helmets, I always like to make sure I have a nice neutral primer. Uh, this will allow all the paint to adhere that I apply later. And in this case, I'm just using Rust-Oleum Flat Gray Primer. It's always good for um, either getting darker or getting lighter. It's a nice middle point. And you want to make sure that the cast is well cleaned off. I've done it a few times where after you cut out the eyes, there's a lot of that resin dust or you just have a very dusty helmet from uh, cleaning out a lot of that T-visor, or in this case, those eye holes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, some people might like to use that for some extra weathering, but I like to be more in control of that. So after that base coat of uh, flat gray primer has dried, we're going to trace out the designs, right? Yeah, so we're actually quite lucky with this helmet that a lot of the design is already etched in. You can see the, the seam line along the back and sides of the helmet, but Wrecker has his usual half circle on the forehead that leads to a stripe in the back. Um, so we just want to make sure that we get that generally right. I use a fabric tape and just make sure that I have a center point and just slowly go around to create that half circle. But it's not quite a half circle, is it? Right. There are some details of it missing or being rubbed off, supposedly. Yeah, that's right. So... It appears that in between season one and two, uh, he's got, he's been in a in a few tumbles or something because mm -hmm. uh, his helmet design is now asymmetrical. There is a big scratch, rubbed off area of white now on his I suppose his right side of his helmet, mm -hmm. okay. and so we just want to generally map out that area just to make sure that we're aware of where paint will not be. Um, but as you see here, once we are happy with everywhere that the base coat and base color won't be, we are ready to start applying that first really, really dark 
off gray black color mm -hmm. and what kind of paint did you use for that so i like to use of course an airbrush whenever possible um and i use a, a vallejo model color german gray that is the same uh gray that i've been using across the hunter build the tech build and any other bad batch that i've done mm -hmm. personally in the past i think it's a great base for the bad batch characters yeah it's not quite black it's not quite gray it really comes out uh looking pretty pretty close to uh to film accurate or show accurate you get a pristine uh peeling job here it's oh you always nice. love the peelies mm -hmm. once the black is taped up we just want to make sure that we move on to the gray now it's pretty close in color to the primer that we're mm -hmm. using but i just want to make sure that there's some consistency between all the other bad batch helmets i've done so i am using the um reefer gray and a dark and light reefer gray that you commonly see across many of the builds that we've done just to make sure that we have that consistency mm -hmm. so you're using the dark reefer gray as the base coat and then the lighter colors on top of that right that's exactly it and especially hitting the middle points just where light is more likely to reflect off of so when we started this helmet we were kind of uh, begging for good references of the backside of Wrecker's helmet. And we didn't get those until uh, you had already kind of completed this backside, right? That's exactly right. Unfortunately, um, typical of Wrecker, he always has his helmet off and never facing the back towards us, or he's out of view, or he is just blurry, So, or has his backpack on. So we never quite see the back color of his helmet. And now, of course, like all the other Bad Batch members, the red had weathered down into orange. Mm -hmm. Or they it, just repainted it as orange. Exactly. That's it's the kind of what we assumed. And, well, thanks to a nice colored bright episode, we finally saw that for some reason, I guess he takes better care of his helmet than others, the red has remained from season one. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same red as uh, the first season. So I... Despite having already done most of the orange, I had to go back and color everything over again. Now, thankfully, I was using a nice, quite opaque red, so it just layered over really nicely. And that was a Citadel Mephiston red, uh, which was a nice base coat before hitting the center lines and the exterior with just a darker shade, just to create some depth. But now we're ready to start working on the white down the center in the face of the helmet, right? Yeah, and it is really patchy. It is weathered and different tones. So I like to just go through and go heavier in some areas, darker in others. And I just want to get a, a general sense of where this white will be. And because I know that I'll likely be taking a lot of it off or painting over it with mm -hmm. uh, future weathering. But then we are faced with the most recognizable part of Wrecker, which is his tusky yeah, mouth the design. Little, the little teeth marks. Yeah. So whenever possible, I like to make sure that I trace over the design just using a pencil. If possible, I like to use a white coloring pencil, but I did not have one available at this point. And I just take my time and design the shape until it looks pretty close. The final test is when you apply the tape around it. I like to use a pinstriping tape to get those curves and edges. And I just generally mark out something close to the shape because I know that I can later touch it up, remove the paint, um, add paint later, and just make sure that it is looking pretty close to how I want it. Because you do some stippling around the edge a little bit, right? To kind of blend it in. That's exactly right. And that allows me to, yes, blend it in, but also shape it later. Mm -hmm. Take away space when I've slightly gone overboard, which I'm known to do. So, as you said, we have our day one wrecker or cadet wrecker. Yeah, clearly straight out of the armory for the first time uh, mm -hmm. without any of his iconic weathering. Very clean shaven wrecker. <laughs> but we got to dirty him up a bit. Blend in some of those lines because... Most of all the animated clone trooper helmets all have very liney helmets. Yeah, like, they they're they are clearly designed in a way that makes them look hand drawn, despite them being CGI. Mm -hmm. And so the best way to do that is to create a stipple effect by using your base paint. In this case, it was the German gray. Using a, a thick brush, just uh, usually a dry brush, and just stippling and stabbing in almost randomly across all of the corners all of the edges 
just to create an, a feeling of randomness, of weathering, of removal of paint. And you can just build this up over time and go back to your references and see where it really is thicker than most. Right. We don't want any of those crisp, clean lines for this for Wrecker. Especially not Wrecker. So with that done, I start to add some color variation. We know that Wrecker is one of the most weathered clones here. So I start to add layers of black airbrush paint and then I apply just a little bit of airbrush cleaner to a cloth and start to wipe that off, smear it around, create that randomness mm -hmm. that makes for proper weathering effect. That will start to create some variation of tone, shadow, high spots that you'll naturally find on this sort of color scheme. Mm -hmm. Wrecker's always been kind of the one down in the trenches, the guy that gets real dirty. And so naturally his helmet is going to be a bit more weathered. Exactly. And we really want to make that shine. So you're doing a bit of white line work around the helmet, right? We can see that Wrecker's helmet has, I don't know what to call them, but just these white detail lines around the helmet, kind of like streaks or smears. Yeah. And it also goes to further talk about the design of the Bad Batch, that it almost looks like it is hand-drawn, hand-painted. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to do is just dry brush on, well, a little more than dry brush, because I want to create natural smears, uh, natural streaks along the surface, because when you look at it from afar, it looks hand-drawn, mm -hmm. but maybe a bit more professional than that. But once we've got all of those lines done, we want to protect that. How are we going to do that? Yeah, it's almost ironic that we want to make sure that he doesn't get any <laughs> yeah. more weathered. We like it weathered exactly this much. No more, no less. <laughs> so what we do is apply a layer of clear coats. Uh, I like to just st use a standard matte by rust -Oleum. That will seal everything in and that just leaves the lenses. That's right. So you want to trace out the shape of the uh, face shield that you want to cut out. You want to trace that out in paper so that you have a nice good template, a nice gauge of the size. You're going to be cutting it out into two pieces, right? That's right. They're just two separate eye holes, unlike uh, a lot of the clones. So what we want to do is just trace that out, uh, cut out that piece of paper, and then trace that onto some uh, replacement visor, some uh, face shield. And once we have that, we want to get some hot glue and the visor clips that uh, you all have been recently enjoying so yeah, much. Yeah, those are quite handy. And we just can friction fit that into the eye lenses and we're good to go without any further work. These clips work great for casted helmets because there's no real way to get details on the inside for something like that. The yeah. inside is basically just generally smooth completely. You can't really add the visor guides that we do on a lot of our 3D helmets. So this provides that without having to uh, pre-cut anything. But once we have those eye lenses in, we're pretty much done here, right, Jamie? Yeah, that's it. And it was really fun to go over everything that I meticulously painted and try to purposefully destroy it. Mm -hmm. Wrecker's helmet has, despite it not changing significantly from season one, it has definitely become more weathered and more scuffed in that animated style, which I think you replicated very well here. Thank you. It was fantastic to do and really dig into the animated style and try to bring that into real life. So we're going to put Wrecker up on the shelf here next to uh, Tech and Hunter. We're going to replace this uh, this old Cybercraft Wrecker helmet. Uh, get that out of here. Uh, this one's looking much better. I'm very happy to have it up on the shelf. Jamie, I think you did another amazing job with this Bad Batch helmet. This might be the last Bad Batch Season 2 helmet that we do for a while. Echo, possibly. Echo hasn't really changed much. Again, just like just like Wrecker, he just removed his 9-9. And after that, there wasn't really much change. But this is the last helmet cast from the Bad Batch that we currently have on offer. This is probably my, I think, my fourth Wrecker helmet that I have. So I'm going to have to find some new places to put them all and maybe give some away. I don't know. But I do know that it looks very nice up on the shelf. That's definitely where it's going to live from now on. And I think you just knocked it out of the park. Thank you. Well, everybody, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that you learned something and are feeling confident enough to take on a project like this yourself, just because it's it feels so awesome to have all of these Bad Batch helmets up on the shelf. It's really something to see them all together. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope to see you again in the next one.